Hey guys, thanks for joining me today for Motivational Monday. As you know, every Monday, right here from my house, I do a live stream on a different topic about table tennis. In the next couple weeks, I'm going to be gearing my topics more toward high performance players, more toward national team players. Today's topic is on serving. Also on Fridays through my YouTube channel, we do Fitness Fridays. So make sure you join us every Monday and every Friday. So today for serving, I have eight key points that I want to just detail with you and then I'll be taking your questions. Go ahead and type out any questions that you want right now. After I get through a few of these, I'll be taking your questions. And again, thanks for joining me. The first thing to think about is that there's dozens of aspects of improvement. If you're going to make the next Olympic team four years from now, what do you have to do? There's maybe 30 or 40 or 50 different elements of your game that you need to improve, but serving is one of them. Okay, so you're locked up in your house right now. What are you going to do? Hey, I can't do this, I can't do this, and I can't do this. Is that what you're going to do? Or are you going to say, hey, maybe out of those 30 or 40 or 50 things, there's a dozen things I can do. Maybe not a dozen, maybe seven, maybe eight things. Maybe serving is one of those things. It definitely is. So think in terms of there's many aspects of my game I need to improve this year, but serving is one of them. I have a table at my house. I have a bucket of balls. I have a, ra a racket and I've got plenty of time on my hands. I should be doing serve practice. So think in terms of it's not the only thing you can work on, but it is one of the key things that you should be working on this month. The next thing to think about is try something new. Right in the middle of the tournament season, if you've got four tournaments within the course of a month, you probably don't want to be experimenting with too many new serves because it's difficult to develop a new serve. But right now when you have a lot of downtime, now is the time to develop something new. No, you don't have to ditch your old serves and just completely trash those, but why not try something new? Okay, you've traditionally just served forehand pendulum. Why not add a hook serve, a reverse, or even backhand serve? Also, in terms of trying something new, instead of just serving from here, why not serve from the middle or why not serve from there? See, traditionally, right-handed players would serve more from this side, so that way they could play a forehand on the next ball. As the game becomes more backhand dominant and people start using more backhands, especially over the table, it doesn't necessarily make sense to serve from here, run to the middle, and then play backhand from there. So now a lot of players are serving from here or from here. That might be something that you could try. So maybe it's not completely a brand new serve. Maybe it's a new version of your current serve. Point number three is tune up the usual. Okay, so don't completely ditch your main serves and just work on brand new serves. Every one of your serves still takes some practice. Uh, Michael Mays, he was in an interview one time and he said, every day I work on each of my serves 20 serves. So he may be working on something new, but he may serve this serve and this serve and this serve and this serve and this serve. If you've got five main serves that he does, every day he does 20 of each of them. Why is that? Because every serve needs continual work to keep the same momentum and to continue building. So while you're trying to develop new serves this season, also make sure that you continue to work on your current serves. Make sure that your current serves are good serves. So let's say for example, um, your current serve is 2400 level, all right? And then you're working on a brand new serve that's completely underdeveloped, and you work on that brand new serve for two months now. And somehow you amazingly get your brand new serve up to 2400, but you haven't worked on your current serve, so your current serve is now down to 2200, you haven't really made any progress. You've added another serve, your current serves are worse, so it doesn't really help anything. We just finished point number three. If you just joined us and you have any questions about serve, make sure you type it in. As soon as I get through these eight points, I'll be ready to answer your questions, okay? So now we're on point number four. Think in terms of how the serve sequences together with your game. Are you a chopper? Are you a looper? Are you a pips player? Do you like to play close to the table, mid distance? Is your game revolved more around slow control spin? Maybe it revolved around blocking. Are you looking for controlled counter loops from off the table? Are you looking for off the table, uh, right off the bounce counter loops? What is your style and does your serve sequence with your game? Your coach would be a great one to ask as far as that question. And also do some homework on your own. 
try to find three or four or five world-class players that play a similar style to you and see how they set up points. I honestly think in table tennis, this is one of the main missing points that people have is that they've got all these isolated skills, but none of the skills like sync together. So you say, how can I learn to sync it together? The easiest way is to serve serves that are relevant for your style. So I'm not going to tell you, I could go into a three hour lecture right now with which serves fit which styles better, but I'm not going to tell you that right now, but I'm going to give you that as a homework assignment. Go home and write out about your game. Write out, how do you prefer to third ball attack? Do you prefer to third ball attack this way or this way or this way? And what serve set that up? Then try to find three or four or five world class players that play similar style and ask yourself, how do they serve? How do they set up points? Like I said, having isolated skills without being able to link them together is really gonna be an incomplete game for you. So think about the sequence. Don't just think about the serve. Think about how that shot mixes with the rest. Okay? As in point number four with the sequence, you can also think in terms of getting ready. So you've got your bucket of balls and you serve and you serve and you serve and you haven't moved an inch for two hours when you're serving. Is that thinking about the sequence? Why not serve and get back ready in your ready position? Or serve, get back ready in your ready position, and then make a shot for the next ball. Make a shadow stroke, okay? Because like I said, it's not just the serve, it's what comes after the serve. Personally, some of the best times that my serve worked well was not when it was super spinny or super flashy, but it was when my attack after the serve was good that forced them to make more mistakes because they had to try to receive more precisely. So I have to reemphasize number four, think about the sequence of the game and not just the serve. Number five is think about the contact point on your racket. Where should the ball hit on your racket? For me personally, when I'm doing pendulum serve, I try to hit right up in here a little bit, right here, and then I hit. If I'm gonna do reverse pendulum serve, I usually hit right in here. If I'm going to do hook serve, I usually hit right in here. So everybody has a little bit different contact point that they feel is preferable for them. So what, do you, what you need to do is spend some time figuring out where you can get the most spin, where you can get the most control. It's usually the furthest from the axis point. So if I'm doing this, I feel my axis point is down here, so I'm going to contact the ball there. Okay, but do a little bit of experimenting on your own. You have plenty of time. You're on lockdown, you're staying at home, probably watching Cartoon Network seven hours a day. You have plenty of time at home. So experiment with different contact points and see what works best for you. Once you find the contact point that works best for you, how do you isolate that particular spot? This is one thing that I've been working on with my students recently, is developing a good system for being able to hit the correct spot. So what I would recommend is take some tape, not tape that leaves like residue, but uh, maybe something like uh, scotch tape and tape off the zone that you don't want to hit. So let's say for example, if you want to do pendulum and you want the ball to hit here, take scotch tape and tape over the entire racket here, leaving just this exposed. When you do pendulum like this and the ball hits the scotch tape, it'll just slide off your racket. If it hits here, you'll be, able to, you'll be able to contact the ball correctly. A lot of people think that they're hitting the ball in the right spot, but they're actually hitting in the incorrect spot. So the tape is a good way to do it. Um, if you don't want to use tape, or for some reason you don't have tape in your house, and you can't order it from Amazon, I would recommend breaking out a new ball. If you have new rubber and a new ball, the powder from the ball will leave a mark, and you'll be able to test where your ball is hitting. All right, so we just talked about contact point. The next is controlling the bounce. Did you know that by far the number one reason people miss serves into the net is an incorrect bounce on their side. So every single time that you serve, before you serve, you should have a picture in your mind of what your serve's gonna look like and you should also be able to control the bounce. So if my serve, if I serve into the net, I should be able to clearly say, oh, I served into the net because I hit too far up here and the ball didn't have enough time to rise. Or I served into the net because I hit back here too far, the ball rose and then it dropped into the net. So if I make a mistake, I should clearly have an understanding of did I serve into the net because the ball didn't have enough time to rise or it rose to the peak and then dropped. So how do you develop that? What I would recommend 
is just practice your serve and look to see where your best serves are hitting on the table. Maybe short topspin, maybe you want to hit it here. Maybe short backspin hook, maybe you want to hit it here. Maybe deep side spin, you want to hit it here. So each person's a little bit different. So instead of tell, me telling you, you have to hit here, you have to hit here, just do a little test on your own. Uh, take some coins, maybe quarter size coins, or maybe lids from like a water bottle, and put those targets down on the table. Serve for a week with those targets down so you can picture it, then remove the targets and practice for another week just picturing the targets in your mind. Most people, like I said, they're missing serves because of an incorrect bounce on their side. The next thing is controlling the height. A lot of people think about developing a flashy serve with a lot of spin. A lot of people want to have some flashy variations, which is good, it's not bad, but controlling the height is a big thing. Uh, in the coming weeks, I'm going to be demonstrating one of my products. It's called TT Serve. And TT Serve is a transparent retractable screen that actually goes over the table like this so you can learn on your serve to keep the ball low. It's available for sale on my website if you'd like to get it. Um, if not, at least watch the instructional videos about TT Serve and try to get that concept in your head. Try to make sure that the entire trajectory of your serve is low and not just the point at which it hits the net. Some serves are low when it crosses the net, but it's high on the other side. So you want your entire trajectory of your serve to be low. I actually talked to Sharath Kamal about this uh, in person, about being able to serve low, and it's true. Basically, almost every serve you want low, but there are some exceptions. There are some topspin kick serves that you really want to be high and bouncy. So for those serves, of course, you wouldn't be using TT serve, but for all the other serves, you'd want to be able to serve as low as possible. A lot of times people think, well, if I serve low enough, the opponent won't be able to flip. Well, that's actually incorrect. They still will be able to flip, but they probably won't have as devastating of a flip. See, the flip in and of itself is not that scary, and it's fairly easy to loop. But if they're flipping the ball at you at 20 miles an hour versus 60 miles an hour, that makes a big difference. So we don't mind if they flip the serve. It's okay to loop the flip, that's fine. But if they're really like ripping winners past you, okay, this is incredibly too high. So if you just think about trying to serve low in tournaments, it's difficult to adjust. If you can practice serving low here while you're training in your basement, this is really the time to develop it. All right, last point, and then I'll be taking your questions. So point number eight is to mix it up. What do I mean by mix it up? I mean, try different things. You should be trying as many different motions as you can. Right now you've got a lot of downtime, so let's say you have an hour of serving practice. Make the first 45 minutes very, very, very strict and rigid as far as full concentration, maximum quality, but the last 15 minutes change it up and do something different. Try a different serve, even try some trick serves. Um, have your mom or your dad or your brother or sister come down and try to return the serve. Even if they're not a good player, just having a target over there sometimes helps. So do some structured practice, but also be willing to have a little bit of fun with it. All right, I'm gonna be taking a few questions from you guys, and then we'll be closing up with a, uh, a few closing comments. So let me check your questions here. All right, still reading. If you guys have any other questions, you can ask. All right, so far it looks like no questions have been submitted. So I'm gonna wrap up with a few closing comments and then I'll check the screen again to see if anybody has any questions in regards to the serving. Before I wrap up with a few questions, I do have to let you know that this is just really the tip of the iceberg as far as what's out there for serving. I recently posted 11 serving videos on my website as well as 11 tips that you can use to improve your serve. So make sure you check out my website, samsonabina.com. And also, I wanted to let you know, one of the reasons I'm doing Motivational Monday and Fitness Friday is just to give back to the table tennis community. You guys have been so good with helping me with the GoFundMe. Uh, as of last night, we just hit the $10,000 mark and we have about 11 more days to reach our goal of 18,000. So thank you so much uh, for donating. Um, in conclusion, I'm just gonna wrap up with a few closing comments. Most people think of serve practice as being boring. 
They want to go down there and serve just to get it done with for the day. It's actually quite intriguing when you think about the intricacies of what all there is with serving. The finger positions. What, how can I change up and hold the racket with different finger positions? Which finger should be applying pressure? How much tension should I have in the wrist, in the shoulder? How can I throw my body into it by transferring my weight to get more quality on the ball? How can I make the ball do different things? How can I serve lateral side spin and make the ball go straight with a lot of spin? How can I serve deviation spin and make it go off the side? So once you start thinking about more about the details, it actually makes it much more interesting on your serves. The other thing that I do, and one of my students, Sarah Jolly, does quite a bit, is sets up a tripod on the other side, and every two or three minutes during serves, goes over there and scrolls back through and re-watches the video. If you have the video camera right there, as in your server, uh, serve returner's perspective, as you serve different motions, you can test to see how deceptive your motion looks. So I think that's another way to make it more interesting is every couple minutes, go over there and, excuse me, coach yourself. Do a video analysis of your own serve and see, hey, does my side spin look similar to my top spin? Can I make my backspin serve look like top spin or my top spin serve look like backspin? Another thing that you need to be able to do well is take your time. I would rather you serve three or four serves a minute where you're very, very focused at doing the correct thing as opposed to just grabbing the ball and serving, grabbing the ball and serving, and whipping through thousands of serves, hoping that something might possibly maybe happen. So take your time on your serve, especially when you serve a good serve. You serve a good serve, what should you do? You need to be able to close your eyes and imagine what you just did. Imagine how you stood there in your ready position to serve. Imagine what your grip pressure was like. Imagine how high you tossed the ball. Imagine how you turned your body. Imagine how you shift your weight. Imagine what the contact point felt like. Was there vibration? Was there not vibration? Imagine where you hit on the racket. Imagine where the ball hit on your side of the table. Imagine how the ball crossed the net. Imagine how the ball reacted when it hit the other side. The more of your senses that you can use, the easier it is to bring out that same serve again. That amazing serve that you did should not be a once in a lifetime serve. It should be repeatable. How are you going to get yourself to repeat it if you can't remember what you just did? Okay, so you should be able to actually see the toss. You should be able to see the contact. You should be able to see how the ball crosses. You should be able to feel how it feels as far as the vibration when it hits. And you should also be able to hear the sound when it hits. So the more of your senses you're able to use, the more you're going to be able to repeat it. A lot of players and a lot of coaches say, you got to remember what not to do. Well, you have to remember what to do. I saw a saying on Facebook, it said, um, it said I, I don't lose, I either win or I learn, okay? And I, I agree with that statement, but I also dis disagree with it. Because it's like, I either win or I learn has to be two separate things. And I think you can learn as much from winning as you can from losing. A lot of times people are like, well, you're gonna learn because you lost. Well, you should also learn from the win, and that applies to serving as well. So if you make a good serve, you should be able to go over to the dry erase board and write down 10 aspects of why that serve was good. If you just tell your coach, yeah, that was a good serve, good is one of the most non-specific words in the English language. It doesn't really tell the coach much. But if you can describe with 10 or 15 bullet points why that serve was good, guess what? Now it's repeatable. All right, I'm gonna go and check my phone and see if we've got any questions, and then we're gonna wrap up for the day. All right, we got a few questions coming in. Thank you, guys. All right, so John says, on the reverse pendulum serve, shouldn't the contact be in front and not on the back? All right, let me see if we clarify that a little bit. On all the other serve variations, you are dragging the ball on the long path of the racket. When you contact the ball on the back for the reverse pendulum, it's shorter. Yes, good question, John. So for reverse pendulum, I'm gonna actually serve as if I'm facing you, it should actually hit here. So sorry if it was a misquote earlier, it should be here with the long part of the racket following behind, okay? Pendulum, I'm gonna be hitting here with the long part of the racket following behind, and hook, I'm gonna be hitting here with the long part of the racket following behind. So hook serve, I'm hitting more here. Pendulum, I'm hitting more here. 
and reverse, I'm hitting more here. Great question, John. I love the question. John is a top fan of the Samson Vita Table Tennis Academy, as you can see on his profile. All right, we got another question that came in from Eddie. Eddie says, I know that in doubles it's harder to set up points, but in your opinion, what are some good serves that also allow your partner access to the return? So that's a great question, Eddie. And sometimes also in doubles, instead of the server signaling, it's actually the, the partner of the server that sometimes signals. You should think in terms of what types of returns does your partner want to see coming at him. So um, there are different serves. A lot of people serve short no spin in doubles. Um, one of the things that I don't like to see in doubles is I don't like to see serves always going kind of here. I feel like one of the things that good doubles players are able to do is really control the depth and the placement really well. Even though it has to be in that half of the table, it doesn't have to be to just one position. So being able to mix up the exact placement within that block I think is helpful. And if I'm serving, oftentimes it's going to be up to my partner to call out the serve depending on what type of ball he wants. Depending on if he wants me to serve half long, let them spin up and then go for the counter loop. Depending on if he wants me to serve short no spin or short top spin, asking the opponent to flip or serve half long heavy backspin or very short heavy backspin. Um, this oftentimes depends on who I'm paired up with. And I really think that if U.S. is going to medal in the Olympics, I think one of the biggest things is can we play well in mixed doubles? Mixed doubles is the easiest event to get a medal in, and not that many people are training in doubles. So that's one of my biggest uh, passions about the Samson Davina Table Tennis Academy in the future, is really training the players to play in doubles. Uh, doubles has a lot more up potential than singles does. There's a lot of people training singles, millions of people playing singles but not as many people are seriously training in doubles. All right, we got a couple more questions that came in. Joe Shiraki says, your imagination is the best tool you have. I like that, Joe. All right. Heath says, how do you increase flexibility for the reverse pendulum serve? That is a great question, Heath. Um, it comes from practice, but also a uh, training partner or whatever can help stretch it out. So. You're right, for the reverse pendulum, the arm does have to be quite flexible like this. Um, I'm not a doctor, so make sure you consult your physician before starting any exercise program. But if you actually hold onto a towel on this side, you can grab the towel. I wish I had a towel here. Uh, let me see if I can get a towel and I'll, I'll show you. Okay, one that I like, that I think is good, is grab the toe, go like this, and pull this way. And I feel like that increases the movement to go there. Also, you can hold a towel here, and you can have a training partner or a friend hold it that way and pull gently that way. The more you're able to get your arm back inside your armpit, the more snap you're gonna be able to get. But you're absolutely right, Heath. If you just start here and you're just doing this, the quality on the reverse pendulum is not nearly as good. So I would recommend using the towel and just doing a lot of practice with the ball or without the ball, really focused on pushing your hand back further. Um, obviously you're gonna have to go gentle and this is gonna take some time to develop, but you're absolutely right. Getting more flexibility is gonna be a huge help with reverse pendulum. All right, so Rhonda says, for players too short to do the reverse pendulum, what serve should they try? Um, for very short players, like kids, because they're already down low, uh, tomahawk serve is really good because they don't have to bend down low. Kids are already down here. Uh, for shorter players, a pendulum is quite good and also backhand. There's two different ways to do backhand. You can serve over the shoulder or you can serve under the shoulder. Usually for taller players, they usually serve under the shoulder. For shorter players, they serve over the shoulder. Great question, Wanda. All right, guys, I think I've answered your questions. 
So make sure that if you have any more questions, uh, you send me an email. I'm going to be doing a follow-up article on this, and I'm also going to be posting this video on YouTube and on my website as well. So thanks again for donating to the GoFundMe. Like I said, we've got a lot of support, and this is going to help us to really reopen stronger once the coronavirus is done. If you want information about the donations, um, you can go to GoFundMe, or you can check out all of the information on my website, samsonavina.com. Thanks for watching.